Tracy Bowden reporting. Indigenous sea rangers and scientists are trying to work out why one of the Northern Territory's most remote archipelagos is a haven for rare marine animals. They're collaborating on a project to satellite tag and track a breed of small whales as they travel around Groot Island. And the area's traditional owners plan to lodge a native title claim over 17,000 kilometres of ocean to try to better protect it. Jane Barton reports. Island, 50 kilometres off the Northern Territory coast, has some of Australia's most biodiverse waters. The island's sea rangers and government scientists are researching why rare dolphins, known as false killer whales, congregate here. There's something very, very unique about it that these uh, big top water predators, particularly the false killer whales, are, um, you know, circling uh, the Groot Archipelago. Scientist Carol Palmer is satellite tagging and gathering DNA to find out whether the animals should be classified as threatened. They need to eat a lot of fish and so there's certain areas that are obviously really, really productive and to be able to identify those means that we can potentially manage those areas uh, into the long term. Much of the ranger's work is protecting these and other creatures from abandoned Indonesian fishing nets and debris. So we're trying to find where they are and get some darts into them and see where they go every year or during the year because there's lots of threats around the island. One of them is uh, climate change. Uh, more plastics now than there ever was. The Anandiliakwa people want to better protect these waters so they've decided to lodge a native title claim over 17,000 square kilometres of the ocean around the island. They hope it will stop damage to the ocean floor by commercial fishing trawlers and help fend off plans to mine rich manganese deposits from the seabed. Hopefully by having this native title claim over the sea country, that will enable us to have rights as, uh, as uh, indigenous people living on the coastlines. To win native title in the federal court, the Anandiliakwa people would have to prove their history of occupying and using the sea. This dolphin here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And this dolphin too. This, um, the canoe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking for uh, the turtle and jiggle. There's a strong argument to suggest that the people of this region have traditionally used the sea and, and it belongs to them and um, this native title claim should, um, should be strong. Anandiliakwa Land Council anthropologist Leslie Pine says, as soon as the claim is lodged, the fishing, mining, oil and gas industries will have to negotiate with traditional owners to enter that area of the sea. It's adding a layer of protection, so the people of this region will have a seat at the table. Not everybody using the area is happy about the sea claim. The Seafood Council's Catherine Winchester views it as a direct threat to the much needed remote jobs that the territory's small but valuable fishing industry provides. So around Groot Island, um, there's Northern Prawn Fishery is one of the, the fisheries that operate in those waters, also um, mackerel fishing. But then co uh, closer to the mainland, we would have mud crab and barramundi fishing operation. The industry is already alarmed by the prospect of a smaller fishing area, and traditional owners have already threatened to lock them out of 80% of the Northern Territory's coastline after a decade of stalled negotiations. The successful 2010 native title sea claim over Queensland's Torres Strait set the precedent, giving traditional owners rights to large areas of the ocean. We don't deny the need to have rights recognised, but there's a lot of time and energy that's spent in, in courtrooms. Um, and we don't want that. We want to work on country with traditional owners to figure out solutions. The Anandiliakwa people hope the claim will bolster their plan to revive past attempts to farm giant clams, reducing their dependency on royalties from the island's manganese mine. Yes, in a big way. It will open um, economic uh, doors for us as living people living here on the coastline. We've got industry um, that are willing to partner 
uh, with communities. It's a lot, of, a lot of hard work and it's a lot of investment to get it right, but we've already got some successful examples around the coastline. The Groot Island traditional owners are also prepared for a long fight. Everything takes time. It will take we done now. Could be a year, what could be a year, five years. That's to say it's in the progress, it's in the pipeline. Jane Barden reporting.